welcome. Welcome to my garden. Kind of have a strange question for you this morning is, when's the last time you checked your zone? And what I mean by that is the USDA plant hardiness zone. Recently, the USDA has taken 30 years of data and has upgraded that chart. And over half of the US has been impacted by a zone change. I know my zone, my growing zone changed recently because of the new information. So that's important to know because we use our zones, our growing zones, for knowing or predicting our last frost date, our first frost date, when we can plant and so forth. And when we use our calculators and our planners, we always put in the zone that we are using to give us the most accurate information. So if you haven't gone on the USDA website recently to check your address to find out what your growing zone is, you should. So let's go inside, it'll only take a couple minutes. We'll load up the USDA website and I'll show you how to go in there, look up your information of what your accurate growing zone is. Let's do it. So I'm on my laptop now and have loaded the USDA zone map website. The updated USDA map can be found at planthardiness.ars.usda.gov. And no worries, I'll paste the link in the description below. Now, this new map that just came out a few weeks ago really changes everything. This update will be really valuable to every gardener. Now, if you've been gardening in the United States, uh, you've probably checked out the USDA plant hardiness zone map in the past to find your zone. It helps us to figure out what the plant and when to plant it in our area. And it divides the US into 13 growing zones. And each one of those growing zones has two subzones labeled A and B. Now the map that we've been using for the last, well, 10 years or so, actually came out originally in 2012. Uh, just a few weeks ago, the USDA released this new updated version. And this new version is great because it can help us find more accurate information just by searching by our zip code. The new version is also designed for online use. There's no need to zoom in and out of your state to find your zone. All you do is just type in your zip code and you'll get your zone and as well as what that zone means in terms of an average minimum temperature. You'll find that many zones have changed from the old 2012 map. So let's try a couple of zip codes to see how this works. First, let's pick one from the Northeast. And uh, I just picked Burdenham, Pennsylvania, which is a small area near Lancaster, Pennsylvania in Pennsylvania Dutch country. And I know the zip code is 17505. So I just type that in and there's my search results. It'll tell me there's the area. It'll show me the hardiness zone. The new hardiness zone is 7A whereas the old one was 6B, and that there's been a four degree temperature change. Well, let's try another one, and let's go out to the Midwest, and um, let's see, let's go to Milford, Kansas, and I know the zip code for Milford, Kansas is 66514. And we hit enter, type that in, and there it is, and you'll see again that the zone has changed. This time it's changed from 6A to 6B. And let's just search one more and a um, place called uh, Rockwood, Tennessee. And the zip code there is 37854. So there's the information for Rockwood, Tennessee. And it shows again that there's been a five degree temperature change. And the zone has changed from 6B to 7A. Now, one of the great things about this is not only does it give you this information, but it allows you to zoom in on the actual area because the mapping information is so accurate. Now, the old map would take you down to about six square mile area. This one, you can get down to an accuracy of a quarter of a square mile. And so to do that, we click to zoom and let's click on Rockwood, Tennessee to zoom in to see what the area looks like there. And here we can see the uh, updated information and we're in there 
and as we zoom out just a little bit you'll see how there's actually multiple zones in this area um, there's the main zone that we talked about but right over here we can see some more and actually up here in the in the mountain area and I'm assuming it's more of a mountain area there's another zone now this information is more accurate the reason being is that the old map that it collected data from about 8,000 weather stations this new updated map incorporates data from over 13,000 weather stations and the data was collected over a 30-year period now it's important to remember that this USDA zone map will not show you how cold it might get in your gardening zone it will show us an average a 30-year average of the lowest annual winter temperature for example we can look here and again in Rockwood Tennessee we can see that in Rockwood Tennessee has for a 30-year average being in zone 7a a minimum average temperature of between 0 and 5 degrees Fahrenheit now that doesn't mean that the temperature in Rockwood Tennessee will never get below that as we all know as gardeners there's times when those cold frosts come through when we're not expecting them but what it does do is it gives us a average and we can use that average so when we determine what the plant and when the planet when we plug it into our our planning software this gives us the best opportunity to get the most out of our growing season so the USDA map is a really really helpful guide and as I scroll down here I'm going to show you there's a lot of other great information here that it's really worth taking some time to go over so after you go onto the website and you search for your zip code, don't forget to go down and look at some of this other information that is really, really helpful. Well, I hope you found my review of the updated USDA plant hardiness zone map beneficial. Having this more accurate information will help you decide not only what to grow, but when to grow it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.